like get everybody excited. <laughs> All right, so next ticket we have is 663844. See, I can't be doing this, man. I might need a stand. 844? Yep. Thank you. Maybe. Wait, how? Are we just throwing all the t-shirts out, I'm guessing? Or people can come up and take a couple of them. All right, next ticket we have is 663-861. Uh, next ticket is 663-864. Six six three eight six four for the last time. All right. All right, new ticket is 663-867. 663-867. Next ticket is 663-865. 663-865. And that is going to be the last ticket that we draw for prizes for now. Uh, we'll have some more prizes to give out at the end, whatever's left. Um, but we are going to get started um, with the event here in just a few moments. Um, all right. I think that we're good now. Uh, so... Welcome to WMCA Weekend. I'm Zach Vinsky. I'm a senior media production major here at Muskingum. Uh, this is the first event of three events that we have going on this week for the 11th WMCA Weekend. Uh, we have members of the Red Cross here uh, to talk to you about uh, disaster relief, how to respond after disasters. Uh, and uh, we have uh, been able to give back to the community that supports us here at uh, WMCO, uh, that's the whole point of WMCO weekend. Uh, so that's what we like to do. Uh, but uh, as we move forward, uh, just a couple things to point out. Uh, the donations that we've gotten over the years of doing WMCO weekend has been over $4,000 and 2,500 pounds of food for our three charities, which are the American Red Cross, uh, the Muskingum County Animal Shelter, and Operation Feed. Um, this year's theme for WMC Weekend is Tune Into the Rescue, uh, so that is why we have a panel of members uh, with the Red Cross here to discuss uh, how to prepare for and react to natural disasters. Uh, but before we get started with them, we have a little video to kind of explain about what the Red Cross is. Uh, I actually was one of the people that produced it along with one of my other classmates for our senior seminar project. Uh, so it'll just kind of overlay what the Red Cross is, how it got started, and then some more specifics on uh, the southeastern Ohio chapter uh, located towards Zanesville. Uh, so with that, here's the video. The 
American Red Cross was founded on May 21st, 1881 by Clara Barton. The first congressional charter was given to the Red Cross in 1900 and they have continued to grow ever since that time. The American Red Cross developed the first nationwide civilian blood program in the 1940s. They now provide more than 40% of blood products in the United States. The current headquarters are located in Washington, D.C. The American Red Cross was founded on principles of helping others and have grown to serve in five critical areas today. People affected by disasters in America, support for members of the military and their families, blood collection processing and distribution, health and safety education and training, and international relief and development. The World Wars played a crucial role in the growth of the American Red Cross. World War I created a huge jump in the number of people involved. The American Red Cross is bound by its congressional charter to help the United States military. People would do various tasks to help support the troops however they could, such as rolling bandages to be shipped overseas. They also had a nationwide campaign to knit socks, hats, sweaters, and other warm garments for the soldiers based on instruction booklets and patterns approved by the armed forces. The number of local chapters increased from just 107 in 1914 to 3,864 in 1918. The amount of people involved in the American Red Cross grew from 17,000 to 20 million adult members with the addition of 11 million junior members. The Red Cross staffed hospitals and ambulance services as well as recruited 20,000 registered nurses to help serve the military. The growth of the American Red Cross continued during the Second World War. More than 104,000 nurses were enrolled for military service. 27 million packages were made for American and Allied prisoners of war. And over 300,000 tons of supplies were shipped overseas. The military requested that a national blood program be started to help with wounded soldiers. The American Red Cross initiated that blood program that collected 13.3 million pints of blood for the armed forces. After this, the first nationwide civilian blood program was introduced. The American Red Cross continued to modernize their blood program to help make their products safer and continue to support members of the armed forces and their families through all major wars. I was in Texas. I originally was deployed to Houston and was there for only a day. And then we got word that the mega shelter in Dallas had only 90 people in it. And within two days, they got a rush of buses come in and we had over 3,000. Angie Kirkendall, a member of the Southeast Ohio chapter, was one of many volunteers working disaster relief efforts in the aftermath of 2017's Hurricane Harvey. As a volunteer since 2013, Kirkendall has experienced the best, worst, and most rewarding aspects of the job. The good side of it, I mean, it's very humbling, it's very gratifying. The bad part is it's very gut-wrenching. It takes a toll on you, for sure. There's tons of stuff that happened down there that I haven't even processed yet. Tim Callahan, Disaster Program Manager for the Southeast Ohio Chapter, explains how the little things can make the biggest difference to those affected by a disaster. One guy that I met, you know, all he wanted was a, was a clean shirt because he'd been in this shirt for a week and we were able to connect some resources and get him some clothes and different things like that. That's not necessarily something that the Red Cross does all the time, but we were able to connect him with a church and he was Every time he'd see me, he was just, you know, so happy that he had a clean shirt and, you know, new shoes that he could, you know, function. He was still staying in a shelter, lost everything that he had, but he was very appreciative of that little thing. And, you know, I, you know, I can see him today, just the big smile he had on his face every time I saw him. It's amazing. You know, you lose everything with a fire, obviously. And to stand and hold someone with a quilt wrapped around them, after a fire is just something you're never going to forget. It's a little hard to swallow sometimes, but it's well worth it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't regret it or change it for anything. This is my 20th year with the Red Cross. When you've been in this business this long, you hear stories every day of people who have been affected by, you know, getting a life-saving unit of blood and. I wanted to have a career that meant something, that, that did something for the greater good. The 
the Southeast Ohio chapter of the American Red Cross has gone through several name changes. The chapter was originally founded in May 1917 as the Muskingum County Chapter. The first name change came in 1979 when Perry and Morgan Counties were added. This led to moving from just the Muskingum County Chapter to being called the Muskingum Valley Chapter. They remain known as the Muskingum Valley Chapter until 2015. They continued to gain counties starting in 2010 with the addition of Guernsey and Noble Counties. A year after, they welcomed Coshocton and Washington Counties to the chapter. Belmont and Monroe Counties joined the chapter in 2013. In 2015, the most recent name change came when the final four of the 13 current counties were added. Athens, Vinton, Meigs, and Gallia were the final counties added that led to the chapter becoming the Southeast Ohio chapter. The chapter proudly serves all 13 of their counties in many ways. They have different campaigns that they participate in every year to help various people. One of those campaigns is Sound the Alarm, where the chapter goes around and installs up to three free smoke alarms in local houses. They also educate people on fire safety and help come up with an evacuation plan for the residents. In the last year, the Southeast Ohio chapter installed 1,076 smoke alarms. They also have to deal with the negative effects that house fires cause. The chapter has been able to help 202 families who have fallen victim to a house fire. The Southeast Ohio chapter also hosts an annual event called Hometown Heroes. The event focuses on recognizing individuals every fall who go above and beyond in our local communities in different categories. One of the most common things the chapter is known for are the blood drives held across all 13 counties. Henderson always encourages people to donate blood because they never know who they may end up helping. Henderson experienced that help firsthand when her sister was having a surgery. In 2012, my older sister had to have her aortic valve replaced. And um, we were at Riverside Hospital and um, we got to go back in the uh, recovery room when she came out of surgery. And the nurse back there was telling us everything that um, all the machines were doing. And I happened to look up on the pole when there hung a unit you know, of blood and it said American Red Cross volunteer donor and I said wow somebody really did take an hour out of their day roll up their sleeve and save my sister's life. Though volunteers are an essential aspect of the Red Cross donations are just as important. Money collected from donors is used to go toward providing shelter, food, emergency medical supplies and transportation of response vehicles. You don't have to give us $500. You don't have to give us, you know, a big amount. You know, a dollar helps. That goes right toward our disaster relief fund. And 92 cents out of every dollar goes back into that program for our mission and that fund to help people. So we're very proud of that. Long sleeve shirts, sweatpants, that kind of thing. And actually Walmart, they had trucks come in every single day donating stuff, everything was donated. As a nonprofit organization, the American Red Cross relies heavily on the contributions of its volunteers. In fact, roughly 90% of humanitarian work within the Red Cross is carried out by its volunteers, making it one of the best ways for people who want to make a difference be able to do just that. We always need volunteers. You can volunteer doing anything you want to, from being in the office answering the phone, helping us with a special event, answering the call in the middle of the night to go help a family who's just lost everything in a fire to volunteering to deploy. Anyone who is interested in working with the American Red Cross is encouraged to visit redcross.org and complete a volunteer form. Your options, like I said, are limitless. You know, anything from being an office volunteer to helping with special events to, you know, anything that, that you can think of we need to help with. Through the kindness and generosity of everyday people, the American Red Cross continues to save thousands of lives and relieve human suffering every single day.
All right, so that's what the Red Cross is, uh, what they're about. Uh, so now we'll turn it over to the panel uh, that we have here. Um, we have Jackie Mishler, who is the Blood Service Account Manager. Uh, next to her is Mike Vance, a Volunteer Recruitment Specialist. Next to him, we have Marlene Henderson, who is the Executive Director. Charlie Bogan, who is a member of uh, Service to the Armed Forces Program. Fred Holmes, who is a National Disaster Responder. And Rebecca Green, who's an Executive Coordinator uh, with a background in AmeriCorps. So Marlene, it's all yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Zach, thank you. That's called feedback. Yes, it is. <laughs> thank you so much again, Zach, for that video. Um, we had so much fun putting that together with Zach and Anna last fall when they would come into our office every Wednesday and go through all of our stuff and really get to know the Red Cross and what it's about. Um, with everything that the Red Cross does, we have someone on the panel that can help tell this story much better than I. And I'm going to start with Jackie Mishler. Uh, she is our blood services account manager. And Jackie's been with the Red Cross for... Um, 20 years. 20 years. Uh, she started out as an executive director with the Coshocton chapter and then moved over to blood services. So I'm going to let Jackie explain everything that, that we do collecting blood. And, and I know probably a lot of you here today donate blood. So Jackie? Thanks, Marlene. Welcome. <laughs> well, good morning or good afternoon. Um, first, I want to say your next blood drive here at Muskingum University is on April 11th. So everybody, like, jot that down, put it in your smartphone. April 11th, right here, uh, we're going to be collecting blood here at Muskingum University. Um, I have been with the Red Cross a long time, and I have loved every minute of it. It has been, um, it's like a feel-good job. Every day is different. Um, every day is not easy. Um, every day is not fun. But um, at the end of the day, I can really say that um, I have helped someone that day. Right now, I've, for the last 12 years, I've been with Blood Services. Here in Central Ohio, we cover 27 counties in our Central Ohio region. Every day, we have to collect no less than um, between six, 700 units of blood to supply the medical facilities that we cover. Our medical facilities are about 43 right now within our 27 counties, which consists of Genesis, all the Columbus hospitals, um, a lot of hospitals, uh, Zanesville hospitals, Coshocton, clear down to Athens, at Oblenis. Um, so we cover a lot. and. Um, it, it's just, it's very easy to donate blood. It only takes about 45 minutes to an hour and you literally save three lives. Um, we take that unit of blood, we separate it into three different components, your red blood cells, your plasma, and your platelets, and each of those are sent off uh, to help a patient in our area. One great thing that you guys can download with your smartphones is the Red Cross Blood app. It's wonderful. Make your appointment on that blood app, and you can follow your blood. We'll let you know where your red blood cells go, what hospital they go to. Um, red blood cells have a 42-day shelf life. Plasma has about a five-day shelf life, and um, platelets have a seven-day shelf life. So with our plasma and platelets, we are constantly, constantly needing them. Um, you can go to Columbus and donate just plasma and platelets, which we call apheresis which is very important. And um, whole blood, you can do at the blood drives here. And then we also have our red blood cell collection. We call it double reds or power reds, where we can take um, two units of red blood cells from you, which is important. Red blood cells are used in trauma, um, surgery, anything, cancer patients, everybody uses red blood cells. So um, all the do how many donors do we have in the audience today? Okay, well, I think a lot of you could probably put in um, April 11th in your phone and um, come out and donate. Um, a lot of people say the reason they don't donate is because nobody asked them, so now I'm asking every single one of you here today to come out and, um, and donate. 
um, the life-giving blood that we really need. So. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, next beside me is Mike Vance, and Mike has been with the Red Cross for a long time. And, go ahead. And I'm, I'm rather shy, but it's, it's been 26 years, yes. <laughs> Mike is, is part of our volunteer recruitment team, and um, as you can tell, pleasure to work with. And um, so I'm going to let him talk to you about all the wonderful things you can do to volunteer with the Red Cross. Thank you, Marlene. And, and before I start, I would really like to say what a thrill it is to be here at Muskingum University. I'm, I'm actually a Muskie graduate's dad. Uh, so being back here brings back some great memories. You folks have certainly chosen a wonderful school. And you know your futures are limitless with, with the education you're getting, so congrats. I know we have a few seniors in the room. Um, again, just a thrill to see everyone. I actually see some familiar faces since my son graduated just a couple of years ago, so great to be back. Well, the good thing that I'm going to talk about as opposed to what Jackie, you know, Jackie was after body fluids. I'm really not. Um, Donating blood is a great thing. It's a thing that's needed all the time. It's a thing that you can do to help your community. It takes about an hour of your time. Very worthwhile. I want you to think a little bit on another side. What I would like you to think about is donating some time to the American Red Cross. And I'm going to give you an ulterior motive, something that may actually be a very useful not only to the community and the people you're serving here in Southeast Ohio and in Muskingum County, but also for you. You folks are going to be graduating from college very soon. One of the things as you enter the job market is you're going to be competing against people with similar credentials. And it's always good to have something on your resume that helps you stand out. I'm going to tell you right now, you can do some incredible things as a Red Cross volunteer and employers are going to be very impressed you know, regardless of what your field of study is, whether it's education, whether it's in the medical field, whether it's in social services, there is an opportunity to hone your skills with the American Red Cross, much as you've seen with Zach, as he, you know, him and, and the team here at Muskingum worked on that video. You can actually hone your professional skills with the American Red Cross as a volunteer service and use that as kind of a job training or kind of a, this is my experience as you go out into the job market. So. And that's not even the primary reason to do that. The primary reason is you actually are, with the American Red Cross, you actually are the service provider. I promise you, we're not gonna have you making a lot of coffee unless you, unless you work with Fred down there in food services. What we're going to ask you to do is to share your talent, whatever that is. As a Red Cross volunteer, you get to be the boss. You get to pick how many hours you, you contribute to the organization and you can get to decide where you want to serve. So again, as Marlene said, the opportunities are limitless. I would invite you all to check out the American Red Cross website just to kind of glance at some of the opportunities that are there as a volunteer. And if you're interested, you know, reach out to, to Marlene at the, uh, at the Southeast Ohio office and let her know and we'll walk you through the process to volunteer. But thank you, thank you for your attendance and your attention today, we appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Next on our panel is um, Charlie Rogan. Bogan. Bogan. Okay, I knew I was going to mess that up, and I kept say, thinking it's Logan with something. Okay, um, Charlie is an AmeriCorps with um, our Service to Armed Forces. Most people don't know that the American Red Cross is the only organization in this world that that can give a message to a service person that's deployed from their loved ones back home. So if there's a birth in the family, a death, whatever, we're the ones that get a hold of that service person uh, wherever they're stationed to either bring them home or, or get that information to them. And all, people always think, well, this day and age with, with um, cell phones and computers and everything, they would, al they would already know. Well, they probably already know, but that doesn't mean that they can come home just because they know. It has to go through a messaging system through the Red Cross. But I'm going to let Charlie talk about that some more. So this is Charlie. 
Hello, everyone. Um, like Marlene said, I'm with the Service to the Armed Forces program. I have been since November. And instead of asking for your time or blood, I'm here to just offer my services. So we can, is anybody here part of a military family or anybody here a veteran themselves? Well, thank you for being part of a military family. I am myself, or thank you for serving. Um, there are a few things we can offer people who are part of a military family or serving, and some of those can be more oriented towards reintegration to civilian life from coming home. They can be more about reconnecting with families, or it can be something like Marlene had mentioned. If there's an emergency at home, we can send a message to your command so that they can, that influences their leave decision greatly. And so there's a simple phone number you can find on redcross.org to use for all of these resources. And we can also offer emergency financial assistance, say you, there's a lap of, a lasp of um, insurance and you wreck your car. Your insurance can't cover it because of that lapse, so therefore you can call the Red Cross and say, hey, I'm in the military or I'm part of a military family, I need this emergency financial assistance, can you help? And we typically offer um, small interest loans or grants for military members. Um, a couple other things we offer is a lot of veterans, when they come home from wherever they were deployed, they feel kind of lost. They feel like they can't go back into civilian life. They just feel stuck. We also offer volunteer opportunities so that you can help get reintegrated to your community. Um, it's a wonderful way to feel at home. And that's really the conclusion of my talk. If you have any questions, because I know there were very few of you who I'm more relevant to, but if you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to come up. Thank you, Charlie. Next on the panel is Rebecca Green. Rebecca is an executive coordinator. Uh, she's my executive coordinator, so her main job every morning is to slap me and tell me to focus because sometimes I have a hard time with that. Um, but Rebecca came to us the first time through the AmeriCorps program, and since then she has done so many things from pillowcase presentations to disaster services, a little bit of everything. So, Rebecca? Um, how many of you know what AmeriCorps is? Because we've been saying it, and, okay. Um, AmeriCorps is like the... Slide it. AmeriCorps is like the Peace Corps. Um, basically, you are um, deployed within the United... Ooh. Um, deployed within the United States to do a job like um, my um, program was prepare Central Ohio. So I taught children how to prepare for disasters. I uh, taught uh, hands-only CPR to uh, people to, so they knew how to resuscitate someone if they needed to keep, them, keep their parts going. Um, and I also uh, have responded to fires uh, that we have locally. Um, there are other things um, those programs um, have, like nutrition programs uh, for inner city reading. So if you're interested in service and um, are looking for a nice scholarship to go with it, uh, I would re recommend you go to AmeriCorps, uh, Google AmeriCorps. It's uh, great program. To the Red Cross. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what the Red Cross does locally um, with disasters. And the most common local disaster is a house fire. Um, the Red Cross shows up to a house fire on scene as it's happening, um, or we meet with the uh, clients who have had the house fire after. Uh, we, su supply, we supply immediate assistance financially so that people are able to buy clothing, shoes, uh, you know, those f immediate needs. If you've lost everything, you're gonna want a new pair of, under you know, a new set of underwear. You're gonna want socks. Um, a immediate hotel. You don't have anywhere to go tonight, we're able to provide you financial assistance for a hotel room. Um, 
the amount of money that is distributed is if the house is lost, um, how many people are in the home, and um, whether it's a Friday night, because we all know hotel rooms are more expensive on Friday nights. Um, we also provide comfort kits, toothbrush, toothpaste, towel, um, shaving cream, razor, uh, feminine products, and we, put, we have them all right here in a Ziploc bag and give one to every member of the family. Something you don't have to worry about. It's nice to have your own toothbrush and get back into the routine for recovery. So having that toothbrush, um, having that comb is a great asset. We also utilize community partners such as the Goodwill, Salvation Army, and we um, give vouchers to be able to go to Goodwill and get new clothing. Um, well, yeah. The Salvation Army um, sometimes uh, provides, depending on the area, um, new, new furniture, things like that. And um, so that is very helpful utilizing those community partners. We're able to guide people in the direction they need for recovery. Um, so that's really awesome, and that's a lot of what I've done um, disaster-wise. We also do training for children and how to prepare for a disaster. Um, children don't know what's going on other than they've lost everything and they need that support, um, sound mind. Uh, and when they know what's happening and they know how to respond to it themselves, their recovery and the recovery of the home and the family unit, it's, it, it, it's much better. They're able to, to respond in, in a way um, that is fantastic. So when a child knows that it takes, you need, you have two minutes to get out of your house and they have two exits, they have the window and the door, they're apt to get out and they tell their parents about it and their parents start thinking, two minutes to get out of the house, two exits, and they can create that plan. So what we do is, I dropped my pillowcase. Disney sponsored this fantastic program called the Pillowcase Program. And we're looking for volunteers for this, just to let you know. You want an emergency kit. The emergency kit um, is this nifty pillowcase that you put in a blanket, a toy, um, a picture of your family, a change of clothes, batteries, a flashlight, a radio, and in the event of a flood and you have to be evacuated, or a tornado and you have to be evacuated, you've got this little kit to feel secure and to have on you to take with you. Um, kids, need ways to cope. And one of the ways that we teach through Pillowcase, written by Disney, thank you very much, is um, breathing with color. And when you breathe, you're able to make better choices. So what they say is, think of your favorite color. My favorite color is green because it's my last name. So when I breathe in, I want to breathe in green. Think about the green grass, green frogs, whatever you're into. And breathe in, take a deep breath. And you think about your least favorite color. I'm going to say it's gray. And you breathe out the gray. You get all that bad out. So not only is it teaching kids how to prepare, it's uh, physically. It's teaching kids how to prepare mentally. And that's a big, big deal. Because when kids are calmer, parents are calmer, and they can recover better. So that is my spiel. Thank oh. you, Rebecca. Yeah. Um, and we have Fred Holmes next. Fred has also brought the Irv that's out on the quad. Uh, he's an Irv driver. He's been a volunteer for the Red Cross for many years. And, pardon? 
Thank you. I, I, we tend to speak in, um, we, we always use um, acronyms for everything, and, and we think everyone understands what we're talking about. And IRV is an emergency <coughs> response vehicle. It's the, the very large red and white truck out there. So I'm going to let Fred tell a little bit more about that and his deployments. Thank you. Um, my first deployment was in 2005 with Hurricane Katrina. At the time, I was city manager in Nelsonville, Ohio, and I've been watching the television and was very, very upset about all the things that were going on, and somehow or another, I wanted to help. I really didn't know anything about the American Red Cross prior to then. Um, there appeared a local article in our newspaper that if you wanted to volunteer, that they had training classes. So I went down, I took my training classes, Two or three days later, I was called to go to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I am packed my bags, I'm all set to go, I'm excited. I'm on an airplane going from Columbus to Baton Rouge. About halfway down, I get this feeling of just anxiety and dread and saying, well, you dummy, what? why are you doing this? You don't know anything about this. You don't know anything about helping people. You're going to be a huge failure. Well, it wasn't a huge failure, but I will remember walking into the into an old, um, I think it was a Walmart or Kmart, where they had tables set up and they had handwritten notes and wires hanging from the ceiling. And I thought, man, this is a this is a mess. No, it's not a mess. They understand how to get organized. And so pretty soon I was at a convention center where we had 1,200 clients. I was driving a box truck. Had, had really a nice assignment. Well, for the first 10 days, that's what I did. In the second 10 days, they found out that I was in government. And I ended up being the nighttime manager from 9 at night to 9 in the morning. You don't know what you can do until you try. It was a wonderful experience. I've met some wonderful people. I've been on 10 different deployments. Um, we, when we go, I can't go on a deployment now that I don't run into someone that I know. And, and the question is always, can you hop unload a truck? Sure. Can you drive a box truck? Sure. Can you manage a shelter? Sure. You know, we're there to help. and. Uh, what I have learned over the years is that every deployment is different. You know, when we were in Baton Rouge, we slept on cots for three weeks. Did it kill me? No. And uh, it's a wonderful experience. And if you have the opportunity to be deployed, you'll, you'll help people, you'll feel better. And it's just, it's an amazing experience. All right, thank you. I think we are going to have some questions and answers now. Or? Yeah, so uh, we'll have about five minutes. Anyone has any questions for anyone on the panel? Uh, have Radio Joe bring the microphone over to you. Uh, you can ask your question, the panel will respond. So uh, open the floor for any questions. No questions? Got one? All right. You said you worked with military personnel. And what came up into my mind was, do you also work with other groups like firefighters and police officers? And maybe you could describe a little bit about how you help in those levels of domestic. So um, we don't, as of right now, do the emergency communications or the financial assistance, the resiliency trainings, those kinds of s services for the policemen, the firemen. However, um, very recently actually we've started opening up, one of the things Service to the Armed Forces does is when, when a um, service member is killed in the line of duty, or if they die in the line of duty, not necessarily are killed, we plant flags around their funeral home and where they're buried. And um, we've recently started doing that with policemen and firefighters who die in the line of duty as well. So those Westerville police officers, I'm sure many of you have heard about the two of them that were killed a little bit ago, we planted um, flags over by there. So those are currently, that's the only service we offer them as of yet. However, um, 
I cannot guarantee that we won't add anything in the future because, again, those flags, five years ago we didn't do that. Or, yeah, five years ago we didn't do that for um, policemen, firefighters. Like, that's a very new thing. So we're always adding services. Thank you. The one thing that I'll, I'll add to that with the fire departments and the police departments, if there's canvassing or anything that, say there's an accident on 70 and you know there's a hazmat issue, whatever, we're always called in for that to help um, with the firefighters and with the first responders. Um, we do a lot of feeding and water and coffee in the middle of the night um, to, to help the firefighters when they're out on the scene of a fire. Uh, if there's a fatality fire, you can pretty much guarantee that the Red Cross is right there to help the fire department and the police department. The flags that Charlie was talking about actually got started in Muskingum County in 2008. Uh, we had um, a service member that was killed in Iraq or in Afghanistan, I'm sorry. And he was actually brought back here to be buried instead of Arlington. And his godmother decided that she wanted to put flags from Zanesville to Beverly. And we got the flags donated. We had the volunteers come out and we put flags from Zanesville, clear down State Route 60 to Beverly to the cemetery where Kyle was buried. Uh, we still have those, a lot of those flags. Uh, a lot of them over the years have kind of, you know, aren't looking so good, but it's just every time those go out, I think Kyle's there to welcome, you know, to welcome home another fallen hero, whether it's a firefighter or a police officer. So, okay. Yes. Um, for the deployments, like you said you went on an airplane, are those paid for or is that also a volunteer? You're contributing your own. Um, on the deployments, the Red Cross covers the cost of travel. Uh, and also they give a stipend per day for food. Um, I can't, I think it's 32, is it 32 or 33? How much is it? $33 a day. So uh, <clears throat> your, your travel is covered. And also, uh, the stipend is supposed to be for food or incident, incident, incidentals. Um, so, I'm a part of a sorority and a club, and the only time we ever hear about the Red Cross is, you know, with blood drives. And um, on behalf of my sorority, we're wondering what kind of things we can do besides, you know, host a blood drive, or is there any events we could bring onto campus to bring more awareness or to help out in any way we can? Oh, there's a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I like you. Uh, we like you. Um, sororities, you guys would be great with Pillowcase Project. Um, if we could get you trained and just go right down over the hill to Stormont, and you could, you could actually train, and we only do that in third, fourth, and fifth grade classes and that would be awesome. The other thing that everybody can help with, you saw it on here, it's so critical. We are canvassing neighborhoods, putting in smoke alarms, or sound the alarm. Anybody can help do it. We put teams of three out on the street, um, and there's an installer, a documenter, and an educator that, that go into the homes, three free smoke alarms to each house, uh, these have a 10-year lithium battery in them, so you can't take the battery out and stick it in any other device. It's going to stay there, and um, it, it's awesome. You walk away at the end of the day, you have met some of the nicest people in the world, and you go to sleep that night knowing that you have made that neighborhood safer, that community safer. We're actually doing one this Saturday. Um, so we would love to see, you know, Muskingum help with this. If we, if we do want a new Concord, you know, for a sorority or fraternity to step up and say, hey, we want to help with the smoke alarm installs. Plus, if you live in an apartment around campus and you don't have smoke alarms, we have a sign-up sheet. We have a sign-up sheet. You can sign 
put your name, address, and phone number, and we'll call you, and we will come and install those smoke alarms for you. All right, until we get one more question. I would just like to thank you all um, for taking your time out and coming with talking to us today. You know, I'm here, um, you know, as a communication student, um, which, you know, this is a great way of communicating with us um, and my sorority as well. Um, my question was about the classes for the deployment. So do you guys, I guess, have like a schedule out for that? Um, when you have certain dates you do that, are those local classes or is there traveling involved to do that? <laughs> um, our chapter house is in Norwick or right down off of 70 on State Route 40. You, the first thing you would have to do is go online and register as a volunteer. Uh, Redcross.org, and then you'll see the drop down for become a volunteer, fill out the information, do your profile, and then from there you can choose almost anything you want to become involved with. For disaster services, for deployment, Anything like that? Most of those all most of those classes are online. Yes, the starter classes are online, but as you move forward, we have classroom um, classroom classes, and those are held um, all throughout our region, which is up through Toledo down to us. So. Um, uh, we have a disaster institute, which happens in July, where um, you can take those those hardcore uh, classroom classes within a three-day span, two-day span. But um, most of the classes are online. Uh, I wanted to clarify also for the Herb driver, that's a separate class. Uh, and someone asked about covering the cost of flying. When we're deployed with the Herb, I've been to Texas twice with the IRV. That's a two and a half day travel. Um, and they will put you up in a motel and cover your cost of your meals and everything. I've been with the IRV. I've been to New Jersey with Hurricane Sandy and also to Birmingham with the uh, tornadoes. And, um, but there is a separate class that requires a driving test and that for the IRV. One more thing that Jackie just brought up, if the sororities or fraternities wanted to start a, a Club Red, uh, we could help you with that, and that would encompass everything. That would encompass, you know, um, blood drives, helping with pillowcase project, anything like that. If you guys want to get involved with that, give me a call because we would love to get that started here at Muskingum. That's something that you can leave, you guys could leave a legacy year after year after year with Club Red. So, okay. Anything else? All right, well, uh, thank you guys for coming and all your questions. Um, thanks to the panel for coming as well, uh, talking to everyone. Um, we would just like to invite you to our next WMC Weekend event. It's gonna be tomorrow from 11 to one. Uh, on the quad, that's going to be with the new Concord Fire Department. You can stop by for trivia. There's going to be an obstacle course uh, and some more giveaways. Uh, Saturday, there's going to be an Orbit Media open house in Caldwell Hall on the second floor, uh, kind of touring around our facility, seeing what we do on a daily basis. Um, it's open to all of the community. Anyone can come. Uh, and then uh, I'd also like to thank our 30 underwriters who made this week's events possible. Uh, all the businesses that we have as underwriters have donated over $1,500 worth of prizes. Uh, so with that, we'll give away some more.